hello <laughs> welcome to a fresh episode of the Oma living show you know what we do here inspire you on all aspects entrepreneurship business nagging issues life relationship mental health balance and everything that bothers the millennial and the society okay so today we're going to be talking about humanitarian works and their effect on our society who else has noticed every turn you take NGO, civil society, it's the biggest and the newest form of scam today. Since I was born, and now I am getting old, Africa has been and has remained a charity case. You see people carrying one thing or the other, moving from one point to the other. We're supplying this to this. The IDP camps are doing this. We are charity. We've been doing charity since 1960. But I don't seem to see any improvement. Or oh, have you seen? Okay, that is what we are talking about today. NGO has become the biggest scam. People seem to, for lack of what to do, or for lack of creativity, or for the need to want to bypass process, just start up one NGO. Register, get stakeholders, get your board of trustees, and then boom, start applying for funds. Who monitors all of this? What are the funds used for? If you have an occupation, say you are... An industrialist you have a company we all know what you do and then you are a humanitarian of course I won't start to pry or start to look at you with my corner eye like ah, where is she getting all this money she's spending because I know your factory or your industry is making money but you don't tell me you're a hundred percent humanitarian you're collecting funds from people you're collecting funds from all of the um, development partners the, the the foreign bodies and then your lifestyle just changes this is what we see every time. I don't know if you would want to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. I talk about it on Facebook. I talk about it on Instagram. And today I'm talking about it on Oma Living Show. I don't know if you'd like to talk about it. Most people just love to pretend and just go with the flow. And then those of us that speak the truth, we are known as the troublemakers. But I do not care. I'll keep on saying the truth i don't care who gets offended this is what i was sent here to planet earth to do it's one of my purpose so we are talking about the humanitarian works all of them in nigeria and their effects are you feeling them so after the break i'll be introducing our special guest ifeolua olatunji david and remember this is special episode and that is why i've been talking to you outside because i need you to see where i live but i have a pretty house okay join me inside So welcome back. We were talking about humanitarian works in Nigeria, their effect. You know how blunt I can be. But anyway, um, so I have with me on the show today a delectable, highly cerebral young woman called Ifeolua Olatunji Davids. She is um, a member of the Life Builders Initiative. And you know, remember when I was talking about um, how lots of NGOs and civil societies don't do the actual work. She's an exemption. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it because she's here. You know, I wouldn't even say something. So I don't even know how to flatter anybody. But if you're Lua and her team are doing a great job. I know because I have been to their, um, some of their projects, some of their programs. I've been to some of their events. I've been to the IDP camp where they house over 5,000 children, adults and teenagers, right? So I'll just allow you to properly introduce yourself right, before you. I do all of the talking. No Who is Ife Oluwa Olatunji David? All right, thank you so much um, for having me here. Um, so um, great work you're doing. Thank you. So um, Ife Olatunji David is just someone trying to make a difference okay. in, our, in the society, in our immediate environment. So every opportunity I find myself doing, be it um, my work, I'm an architect. Okay. Be in my work, I'm a project manager, and then I'm also the program manager of Life Builders Initiative, which is an NGO focused on improving the lives of the poor, the underserved, and the IDP around us. So in our immediate community. So we started out um, just as an education project because oh. yeah. So it's actually a family project. Um, we found um, some kids around the area. Then I was still working full time as an architect. So we found some kids um, somewhere near Games Village, okay. just loitering around when school was meant to be in session. 
So we asked around and then we found out that, okay, there's an IDP camp around. Yeah, is that? Sir, there wasn't even an IDP camp. Sorry, there wasn't an IDP camp then. There, were just, it, there was just a settlement. This was 2013. Oh. The settlement of people that weren't going to school yet. So we decided to do something rather than just talk about it. So we, as a family, we took breaks from work and started teaching about eight of them under a tree. And then we realized that they were hungry. Hmm. And then we started making sandwiches from our hmm. house. And then, because a hungry child cannot learn. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, um, so after a while, the people heard about it, and then the whole IDP situation started around 2014. Mm -hmm. So people, more people joined the community, and then it became expanding. exactly. So it became an IDP camp. We started from eight, became 500, became numbers. We increased to two centers. So we basically, the focal pilot project is the education, which is centered around everything we do. So we have the education where we have two schools, and then we also realize after a while that anybody that causes trouble on the road says they're an IDP. Mm -hmm. And because these IDPs did not have any form of identification, we were involved, we engaged um, the, re um, the relevant government agencies, and we got um, ID cards for about 56,000 of them across eight camps. So we had to uh, take 56,000? Yes, across eight camps. and then. So, but some of them, the numbers have reduced as time goes, because yeah. some of them have moved to other states in the country. Mm -hmm. where, because most of them, their um, main source of living is farming. Okay. So some of them have moved to where they can get yeah, farming. Yeah. Exactly. Into the so, exactly. So we have projects centered around. So our main project is education, where we have schools free of charge with a meal every day. The school without worlds. See the school yeah. without worlds. So we provide meals every day for them because. Um, a hungry child cannot learn. Nine, yeah. We have a medical team that comes and um, checks the children From regularly. Time to time. Exactly, and then we go to the other camps with the medical team. We even deliver the baby with mm. the name Baby David mm. because that's our last thing. Um, mm. So we have um, education and um, inter um, economic empowerment projects for the parents. Capacity development. Exactly, because we don't just want to provide for them all the time. We want their parents to be able to. You want to teach exactly. them how to fish. Exactly. Okay, that will take us to the next. The topic of today's episode is humanitarian work, works in our society, yes. Nigeria now. Yes. What are the effects so far? Because I grew up hearing mm. about Nigeria and Africa being a charity case. Mm. And in 2019, I'm an adult and mm. I'm still hearing the same thing. same thing. We've received lots of intervention, yes. we've received lots of funds. Yes. And I was just hearing the other day, I think it was at your event yes. during the World um, Humanitarian Day, yes. when someone said that very soon we will be removed from the list yes. of those who would be yes, receiving exactly. intervention. Exactly. What do you think? Because, um, sorry, pardon me, sometimes no I have a fault, I'm way too blunt sometimes. Yes, it's fine. And um, I said the other day on Facebook that NGO is a news camp. Mm. Everyone feels that the way to whatever is to mm. own an NGO. Mm. But I know that there are a few yeah. that are really, really doing the work. Mm. So what do you think about the number of NGOs scattered all over? Yes. Measuring it with the effect. Mm. So um, I'm glad you brought this up because that is like the World Humanitarian Day Town Hall meeting we had. We basically gathered a lot of NGOs and then development partners, government agencies, and the beneficiaries themselves. Mm -hmm. So that everybody can sit down and say, what have we been doing? What is the effect and what is the way forward? The solution to a lot of this is like we're trying to propagate the idea that we should all be humanitarians. Yes. Because you by lifestyle exactly because if we are Africans, I don't know when we went wrong, but the African philosophy is neighbors take care of each other, of course. and that's what Better Life Builders initiated. We didn't wait for to get right now. We we still get some support, but we still use a bulk of our money, Your own money. to do most of the job because you are a humanitarian. Exactly. So we use a bulk of our money to do most of the job, but if everybody adopts that ideology, like you came, you came and you supported. Everybody does what their own part exactly, and it doesn't even have to be through life builders. If you look out, if you look at your gates, man, if you look at um, the person in the street, you will always find someone in need. I think every every genuine humanitarian yes. starts off like this. Exactly. The problem is with the businessmen and women who just yes. want to hide yeah, under the cloak exactly. and just okay. So so far, mm. we've just talked about those who just want to do whatever it is with the yeah. tag NGO. But so far, do you think that the work that has been done mm. on the humanitarian front, front or charity front in Nigeria is felt? Do you think it is actually felt? So, if you, I haven't been to every part of Nigeria, Nigeria mm. 
Um, a lot of people might not have heard about Life Builder Initiative from Lagos State or from another yeah, state. True. But in our, or even in Abuja, some people are, are just hearing about Life Builder for the first time. True. So I feel like uh, we are in a society where we amplify the bad and we don't um, give voice to the good. And then we also have this um, culture of if someone does something good and posts it on social media, we think they are doing propaganda. They want to show off. Exactly. We are just trying to. I actually got this from you. We are just trying to encourage others. So if we look into everybody is doing something, I believe there are a lot of good people. I'm one of those people that believe there are still a lot of sure. good people. Because in the you're world. a good person. <laughs> so I believe there are a lot of good people in the world doing their possible best. There can be more. But there are still a good number of people doing, doing the their exactly because I can just I don't want to imagine a world where there are no good people. Mm -hmm. We will probably be walking on the streets and mm -hmm. bad things will be happening. True. So the fact that like um, the problem of these um, IDPs in in Abuja. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there was nobody doing anything. I'm grateful they, they are to jobless, you. I'm grateful they to life builders. No education. You they will be hungry. So just imagine no job, no identification. Mm -hmm. Crying no, all over. Exactly. So the fact that we are able to have some level of sanity in the society, it means there are people doing good. All right. So in essence, humanitarian works are being felt. Yes. What is the goal of life builders in five years? The goal of life builders right now we're planning a stakeholders forum where we want to scale up our activities. Okay. So we've done something that works with minimum funds. Okay. There are a lot of areas that need our our attention. Attention and um, the 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 the, the interventions we've provided. Okay. So how can we replicate this in, let's say, Adamawa? Okay. Or how Expansion. Can we, exactly. How can okay. we replicate this project in Borno State? Because there are a lot of needs there that yeah, need true. exactly. True. So how can we replicate it? And like you rightfully said, the development partners are leaving. Mm, we true. are left with our problem. When they leave, maybe um, hopefully the Boko Haram situation will have ended. But Great. we, we the agree. victims. What happens with the victims? The victims, and if we don't, are they, are they giving chances or, or are they exactly. make provisions made for them to become exactly. better, rehabilitate exactly. them, exactly. and stuff? And then the truth is that all people that cause trouble cause trouble because they are ignored. So if there are thousands of children that are ignored somewhere, what are the chances that they will not grow up to become a society the yeah. Exactly. So we should we should learn to stop being um, um, just um, trying to fix problems but we should prevent problems prevention exactly. the roots, the foundation. exactly so life builders wow. is going into um, volatile communities of, to prevent such situations to provide um, education to provide vocational trainings to provide opportunities for medical personnel to go into the communities and provide their services so we're, we're trying to scale up our projects through the stakeholders forum which will, will bring in a lot of key stakeholders um, development partners that are leaving the government agencies ngos and CSR because a lot yeah. of organizations are meant to be yeah. CSR. So yeah. it's showing them exactly showing them how because right now there are twelve point five million out of school children. Twelve point five I million. I think there are more. Yes, that was that's that an estimate. Yeah, exactly. That's an estimate. Twelve point five million children in Nigeria. How many are we? So that is a serious the serious ticking time bomb. So we need to act fast and act now. Yep. It was nice having you on thank the show. You, thank you so much. It was nice. All day. right, you've heard it from her. She is um I don't know your position in Live Builders. I'm the program manager of Life Program Builders. manager of, of Life Builders yeah. Initiative. Life Builders is one of the outstanding NGOs. You're gonna see more of them on during the Unsung Heroes Award. They've been doing a lot. They have been doing a lot. The first time I went to the IDP camp, oh my god, I was stunned. I was you are doing a great job. Thank you, so much. Your elbow. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you so much. I'll be with you right after the break. But just so you know, Africa and Nigeria cannot continue to be a charity case. I'll be right back. Life Builders Initiative is one NGO you should all emulate. And like she said, you don't necessarily have to own an NGO for you to be a humanitarian. Humanitarians spend the bulk or most of their earnings before seeking for support from the rest of the people. It's been me, Marilyn Oma Anona on this show. And remember, I am your best TV host. Please click subscribe. Don't leave this channel.
till you have subscribed till i see you next week stay inspired